Hello, and welcome to Education Chat, a podcast created by students for students. I'm your co-host, Alyssa Ray. I am Alicia Paulino, and in today's episode, we are going to be talking to people who attend school and have kids, otherwise known as parent learners. On average, parent learners are more likely to drop out, experience higher levels of stress, and overall feel underrepresented in their education journey. Today, we're joined by Adriana to gain insight into who parent learners are, why they turn to post-secondary education, and what they ultimately want for themselves and their families. Hi, Adriana. Welcome to Education Chat. Can you tell us a bit about the college you attend and your major? Hi, um, I'm Adriana, and I go to Barstow Community College. Um, right now, I am majoring in studio art while also um, earning my credentials to have my family daycare certificate. That's great. So we understand that you had your child quite young. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey as a first time mom and how you had to navigate that while also pursuing your education? Having my daughter like quite young, I had her like right before I turned 19. And that was super, super scary um, while trying to enter college. Right after I had her, you know, I felt this drive that I had to do something more. So like, I was like, I have to join college. I have to do something. I have to have something to show for. But with COVID and everything, it made it super, super hard to try and, you know, have that support around to try and watch her or to try and, you know, really have that just emotional stability while taking care of myself and her. That sounds like something super tough to navigate, um, <laughs> especially being a first time mom and everything. I'm sure that that was a wild journey. Um, yeah. <laughs> did you feel welcomed with support and like resources on campus as a, a student parent? Um, not entirely. It kind of felt like nobody knew I was really a mom. So <laughs> it was just kind of something where it's like, I'm a student. That's that's who I am. I'm not a mom and a student in in the college community. And I liked how you mentioned that. So in your opinion, what do you think Barstow Community College and other colleges in the area can, in general, can do differently to help further support student parents' needs? I think um, making it known that there are resources for us available, or especially like, um, uh, teachers and like counselors helping us and engaging us in kind of like our lives and schedules like getting involved or making it known like that they know we are parents <laughs> or just like I said um, getting more resources like exposed because Barstow Community College does have a child care program but the thing is that it takes three months to even get on. So it, like I, in a few months from now, I would already be starting in-person classes, but I wouldn't have any care for my daughter. So I, I wouldn't be able to go. So you mentioned how, how there is childcare, but there's a long wait. Um, is there any, is it free to the students or is there some type of like fee that you have to pay? Um, it's, if you're in EOPS, which you have to qualify. So I think that's another um, struggle for a lot of people. Like um, if parents don't qualify for EOPS or, you know, um, just any situation, sorry. <laughs> no but um, for those who don't qualify for EOPS or for those just coming and they don't know of all of the resources available, um, you know, it's kind of just like, oh, well, I, I can't go to college because I need to be there for my child. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's such a weird, slippery slope, I feel like, in today's society. <laughs> so I don't know if you knew this or not, but there has been a number of case studies that have shown that students who are parent learners actually do better in school than those without children. So in your personal experience, does having a child influence the way you learn? And if so, <laughs> what ways? Absolutely. Um, I tried to go to college um, in 2019, a, a year before I had my daughter, and I didn't even do one class. I, I signed up for the classes, but I didn't even do them. I just felt so like unmotivated 
but like I said, as soon as I had my daughter, it felt like I've already been through so much as a teen. I know I'm strong enough to do college classes. So it felt a lot like, like, okay, deep breath. I know I have somebody to support me. Yeah, I think that's really common. That's why we asked that because um, there's a certain like drive, like you said, in, in parent learners that isn't necessarily there in students who don't have children. They have that motivation to keep pushing them mm -hmm. forward. Has there ever been like any instances where you have contemplated dropping out of school because of the workload? Yeah, yeah, recently. <laughs> um, <laughs> right now I'm starting to, you know, it's starting to become the end of like my school year. Like I'm getting towards graduation and I'm taking a lot more classes and my daughter's getting older. So just trying to keep up with her development and really be engaged in her life is taking a toll in my school, like work and load. And it's just becoming like mixed together. And it's really hard to keep that separate. Um, I catch myself a lot, like she's playing and she wants me to join and I'm sitting down on the computer and she's like, pulling at my leg and I'm like no no hold on and you know it it hurts because you're like like I really want to play with my child but I have to have so much work done yeah and I'm really glad that you mentioned that trying to find a mixture of the two and trying to balance it because I think we can all agree here school is hard it's really <laughs> hard yeah. but on top of that adding a baby into the mix as you mm -hmm. said sounds really challenging and at times just really hard because you can't be there for your child the way you want to so in order to make all of this possible that you're doing you must have a support system behind you what does that look like? Um, <laughs> um, my support system is a little far away. Right now I'm in between um, Barstow and San Clemente. So all of my friends and family can be are really, really far away. The most support system you can get is just try and reach out to your like go on Facebook groups, like try and look at like local like mothers around you and parents and go to parks try and make friends um you know just the closest ones around you who will emotionally like like understand what you're going through yeah uh, it's important to find support anywhere you get it it doesn't matter if it's online mm -hmm. from an online community or you know skyping with friends it's so important to have that so i'm glad that you can find it any way that you can um yeah. <laughs> I think what happens a lot when people talk about parent learners is they like to focus on like the challenges and the struggles and the hardships, but we already know that it's hard. You know, yeah. we, we know it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, so can you tell us what you've achieved since becoming a parent learner and what your hopes are for the future? Since I become a parent and join college, I've done something that I never could have imagined myself doing in um, high school which is joined an honor society and have a 4.0. Since like doing that and keeping it, it's been such of like an eye opener on like what the things that I could possibly achieve, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing where it's like, like, whoa. And for my goals, I want to become a studio art teacher and a daycare teacher after hearing that I'm really proud of you I love how you have your goals set and you're really driven and determined yeah. and <laughs> after hearing you speak um as I mentioned before it is hard to balance everything and um as we um know it's hard to find time for your child Jolene and along with that find time for school but how do you find time for Adriana how do you find time for yourself to make sure that your needs are taken <laughs> care of and from your face I don't think, what, why did you make that face for? Because <laughs> like I said, um, right now I'm kind of in a, a struggle spot where um, I said previously you had to balance college and your kid. Right now, like um, I pretty much do it at nighttime. Like I stay up at night, which is really impacting my sleep schedule. But um, like I just try and paint or like really do something that I enjoy to try and you know, find that 
sanity <laughs> in balancing everything. Before we end this episode, do you have any other reflections that you'd like to share that we didn't cover already? Anything that you want to say to other parent learners out there? One thing that I could say is um, for like future parent learners, like um, people who are in college right now who like might have a child later, um, it just, it gets easier. You know, when I first began, I felt like like I was like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to do any of this. And now my daughter's a year and a half and I'm almost graduated. So it's just, it gets, it gets way easier. <laughs> so that was a really interesting insight into the world of parent learners brought to you by Adriana. Once again, we just wanna thank her for coming on, sitting down and talking with us because it's so important to shed light on student issues, especially um, for students that are so underrepresented like parent learners are. So that was really interesting to hear, you know, the good and the bad, the ugly, everything in between. I think that it's going to be really helpful, a really helpful conversation for people without kids to understand and people with kids who are, who need something to relate to. So I think that it was a great conversation overall. What about you, Alicia? I agree because me and Alyssa, we are not parents ourselves. So hearing Adriana and actually researching a little bit of parent learners before this episode, we got to learn a lot. We got to learn a lot that we didn't know previously. And you mentioned that this is an episode for people who are parents or people who aren't parents. So if you happen to be a parent learner out there, I want you to know you are not alone. There's an abundance of resources out there for you. And hopefully hearing Adriana's story will help to give you that push and that motivation that you may need. And I think it is apparent that these student parents need additional support. The support is needed. And I think the first way to start with that is the campuses that they go to. And there's so many ways that campuses can help to provide resources. And just listing off a few, they can help to afford uh, family housing, they can help distributing more emergency financial aid, they could offer counseling that is catered towards parents. And lastly, but most importantly, we need to encourage the conversation of mental and physical health. Now, I know that mental health is always talked about, but physical health is kind of shifted to the side. And I know being online with our computers, it's very easy to hunch our backs. You know, when you're carrying a child, depending on how heavy they are that could break your back so we need to focus on our physical and our mental health care together combine them and with some changes in the system I really really do believe that improvement can happen for post-secondary education and it can help to improve the generations to come definitely I think uh, change is much needed and encouraged during this time um, and we owe it to the parent learners that are going to school right now. We owe it to their kids who are the future of this world. So I think um, we as a collective can push for change in the, in the education system to help support, better support edu uh, parent learners. So that's our episode today. Thank you so much for being here and listening in. If you like this episode, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and drop a comment down below for future topics that you'd like us to cover. Make sure to subscribe to the GIA channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss an episode. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.